So let's look at the timeline according to Mo Gaudat just roughly here. You said by 2035, 37, we will be in a world that is just completely unrecognizable to what we are now. Or they would look back at us and they wouldn't even recognize who we are, how we live, what yeah. it just- they, they will look back at us with a lot of envy or a lot of surprise. Right. And backing it up to them, the world, uh, I think Ben Gertzel called it the pre-singularity. And uh, when he described this to me, very similar to you, he said that's when, he said bad people will use AI <laughs> to do bad things and co-opt it for their means, which I mean, turn on the news, like you said, power, whether it's China or the US or Russia or Ukraine and wealth, yeah. right? This is how we exert, this is what we do as humans. Mm -hmm. So it's used, co-opted by those organizations until we hit an AGI level and then it's potentially out of our, out of our control. It's certainly, it's out, certainly of out of our control. And that's why you go into the book and that's, I guess, one of your inevitables is that it's certainly out of control. And it's interesting, Mo, because I, I, I have a bunch of students and I get to teach them on a regular basis and I get a, a random cross-section of people sometimes. And I say, when I'm, I go to the inevitable thing, a lot of people look at me funny and then I say, okay, in the next 100 years, it's will these things be 10 or 100 times smarter than you? And almost everyone will raise their hand. I said, look what the mobile phone was. Well, there was no mobile phone 20 years ago. Look at it now. And most of the people will be like, yeah, okay, you're probably right. I guess it is inevitable. But it's really hard to get into this ego protected shell. And I, do, and I don't blame anyone for that. You have to have lived inside the machine to be able to understand how the machine functions. Right. If you if you look Survival. at the machine if you look at the machine of technology from the outside, it's quite deceiving because uh, there is the technology adoption curve, there is the technology uh, acceleration curve, that exponential curve, and, I, and and there is a chart that I normally present that in my mind is you know my view of tech, which is the technology development curve, and the technology development curve is very deceiving. If you look at artificial intelligence, it looks like a hockey stick only. Uh, you know, lying on its side, really. So, so basically, if you look at artificial intelligence, we started talking about AI in 1956. I mean, we coined the term uh, Alan Turing and, and you know, the, the, the Dartmouth experiment and the whole, the whole idea of we can make machines that are intelligent has been part of human imagination since forever, but we thought that the computer will get us there in 1956. Between 1956 and the year 2000 almost, Nothing. We, we could only create a few stupid simulations hmm, that are really fake and they are not intelligent in any way. It was the turn of the century. So everything we see today is the result of 20 years, right? The turn of the century with deep, uh, with deep uh, um, learning, uh, you know, we started to create intelligences that are, you know, primitive, but they were actually intelligences, okay? And the difference, let me, let me explain this for everyone. The difference is until we started to code deep learning and machine learning and so on, the computers appeared to be very intelligent, but they were simply repeating my intelligence as a developer. So I would solve the problem first and then they'll tell the computer to do it a million times faster, right? Okay, without me solving it, and if I solved it wrong, the computer will do it a million times faster, wrong, right? So, so there was no solution offered by the computer, there was just execution. When we, had, when we went into deep learning, hmm, uh, we started to say, okay, uh, look, we don't know how to solve the problem, can you solve it yourself? Right? And, and there was an explosion, you know, Jeffrey would talk about that uh, openly, that the challenge has been in the early years, even until 2008, for example, when we started to work at Google, at Google X on, uh, on self-driving cars, there wasn't enough data to teach those machines. There, was, there wasn't really enough compute. Remember, 2008, was just over there, like it was just a few years ago. Huh? And between then and now, the explosion of the amount of data, the explosion in the amount of, in, in, the, in, the, in the availability of compute power, allows us to do what we couldn't do then, even though we had found the breakthrough. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's going to be bloody, it's going to be nasty. But at the same time, he's going to show you how you can position yourself 
to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's going to happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.